Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today I'm going to be looking at Viva Mexico from Jay Losa and designer Adrian Valenzuela. Now, this deck pays tribute to Jay Losa's Mexican parents. He was actually U.S. born, but he lived in Mexico for a significant chunk of his childhood, and so he drew on the rich culture of Mexico and the vibrant colors uh, in creating this Kickstarter deck that was funded back in 2016. Let's check it out, find out how he did. Now, starting with the tuck case, it's a matte finish tuck case in this really beautiful, vibrant, bright red orange kind of color with accents of turquoise and other colors. Just very simply says Viva Mexico with this sunburst pattern in the center. If you turn to the sides, one side says 16 de September de 1810, which is September 16th, 1810, or Mexican Independence Day. And then on the other side has El que juega por necesidad pierde por obligación, uh, which is uh, in Spanish, a Spanish proverb. It means roughly he who plays out of necessity loses out of obligation. Basically, if you play the game because you need to, then you're going to lose. Uh, roughly what that means. Uh, the bottom here has your ad copy mentions Jay and Adrian, as well as Legends Playing Card Company, who printed this one on their classic, uh, printed this deck with their classic finish. And then the top just has a plain turquoise border. Uh, the back is going to give you a little bit of a preview of the back design of the cards, which we'll look more in detail at in a second. And you have this yellowish postage stamp style seal with Viva Mexico written on it. A pretty cool, nice, bright, very, very bright uh, tuck case. As you open up, no printing or words or anything on the inner flaps here, but you do have this beautiful turquoise color through the uh, inside. Uh, that extra color added there was a stretch goal that wasn't hit in the campaign, but he went ahead and added it anyway as an extra touch. So that's it. That is the tuck case. Very, very bright. Like what was done with this one. Like the design. Like how this one just stands out on a shelf. Uh, now, looking at the back design of the cards, and here you go. Uh, it is inspired by the Navajo patterns that you see on like blankets and ponchos throughout the area. Very, very cool kind of striped pattern with different triangles and shapes repeated all the way throughout in this two-way back design. Really, really bright. Has lots of oranges, yellows, uh, turquoise and even a little bit of like darker blue kind of navy hits in here. So really like the pattern that worked on this one. I uh, love how detailed and intricate this is. There's really small details uh, and one that I think really looks nice in hand. Uh, you do have a thinner white poker border all the way around. And as is the case with all Legends decks, it's kind of a perfectly registered border, meaning it's gonna be even from one card to the next. Extra nice, uh, something you get from, basically from the non-USBCC printers. Uh, so pretty nice back design. I really like that. Uh, the extra cards you get, you only get two because it is a uh, Legends deck. Uh, but you get the uh, two Jokers, both of which feature the pinata. The first one just has the pinata standing there with the Joker banner hanging over the top. And then the second one has the pinata burst open with the candy exploding everywhere. And during the campaign, one of the backers recommended maybe adding a uh, reveal to this one. So as you zoom in, you can see right there in the middle, you have the uh, seven of hearts reveal added in there as a nice little touch. Extra thing you can use for magic. There's your two jokers. And then we look at the cards themselves. Uh, so we're going to start with the clubs on this one. Uh, they feature a standard index and pip in the corner, really kind of designed to make this very, very readable, usable if you want to use this for gameplay. So if you have this in a fan, very easy to identify those. So you're going to see no customization on those, but the pip in the center is going to be custom from one suit to the next. So the clubs feature a nopales uh, or a cactus that you see all throughout both in the landscape, but also in the culinary scene. Uh, and it's kind of in a crude shape of a club there in the center. But pretty standard layout as you go through. Really like the custom pips. I kind of wish that he'd gone ahead and done it on the uh, pip in the corner as well, just to match. But it's a pretty cool look. So there are the nopales. And then you're going to get full custom on the quartz as well. So they all have this kind of yellowish background to them. But they're going to feature different uh, people that you may see as part of Mexican culture. Uh, everything from like the Jack of Clubs here, who's the uh, El Taquero, uh, taco maker that you might see on trucks or carts. 
Uh, you have the Queen of Clubs, who is Our Lady of Guadalupe, symbol of Roman Catholicism in Mexico, and a nod to the indigenous people, El Azteca, uh, one of the kings you might or kings or warriors you may see in the Aztec culture. Very beautiful with that headdress there. All two-way back designs. Really like the uh, difference in the characters that you're going to see throughout this. As you go to the Ace of Diamonds now, the custom pip in the center is replaced with a tortilla chip. Also an obvious tie to Mexican uh, culinary scene. Uh, and you can see those in that shape of a diamond. And then your quartz for the diamonds are going to feature now. You've got uh, the Mexican wrestler over here. This is actually uh, Blue Demon, who is one of the most famous wrestlers in Mexico, uh, had a 41-year career. Uh, so very, very prominent and famous figure there. Uh, the Queen of Diamonds is La India, uh, a reference to the uh, indigenous people of the area. And then you have a Mexican farmer over here with the King of Diamonds. Uh, your hearts now are going to feature El Baracho, uh, who's holding the, you know, kind of sleeping there with the tequila in his hand. Tequila, the most famous spirits to come out of Mexico. Uh, you have the uh, Queen of Hearts, who's a nod to the women who fought during the Mexican Revolution. And the Jack of Hearts features a bullfighter, the national sport of Mexico. Interestingly, if you look at his face and hair there, you'll see his kind of familiar touches to kind of a bicycle uh, jack style with that, with the curls in his hair there. So interesting touch to kind of adorn that jack with uh, Mexican garb here. Uh, the heart pips are going to be these tomatoes cut in half. Uh, Mexico was actually supposedly uh, where the tomato originated in its use in, uh, in cuisine, was actually in Mexico. So there's the tomatoes for the hearts. And then your last quartz are going to be the spades. Uh, so you have the king of spades, El Zapata, who is uh, one of the heroes of the Mexican Revolution, arguably the most famous of the heroes of the Mexican Revolution. Uh, you have the uh, the embodiment of the spirit of death, so the the saint of is Santa La Santa Muerta. Uh, she is an embodiment of death and commonly revered for her role in Mexican culture. And then you have the mariachi over here, and again with that Jack style hair and face. Uh, but a nod to the popular mariachi music that you'll hear all over the place. And then the spade pips, last of all, are going to be these avocados cut in half and then sort of arranged to form this spade shape. They're pretty nice, and obviously avocados are very prominently used in Mexican cuisine as well. Uh, Ace of Spades is going to be your last custom card, and it's going to feature uh, roughly the emblem that you're going to see in the center of the Mexican flag, which is the eagle sitting on a nopales with a snake in his mouth. And the symbolism here is that the Aztecs were told that, uh, the, that they would see this symbol, an eagle on a cactus with the snake in his mouth, and that was when they would know where to form the city of Tenochtitlan, which became Mexico City. And so supposedly they traveled around until they saw this symbol. That was how the, how the city was formed. Uh, and then you've got these sort of branches around here, which kind of arc in a way that turns this, you know, if you kind of squint at it a little bit, makes a little bit of a spade shape to it. Underneath says Viva Mexico, produced by Jay Losa and designed by Adrian Valenzuela. So that's the deck. Really, really nice deck, fun deck. I really enjoyed this deck quite a bit. I love the back design on this one. Handling on this one is great. Legends does a great job with their classic finish. They fan really, really smoothly. Uh, cuts, all that are gonna work really, really nicely. So definitely like how these look and feel in fans. So that's it for this review. Uh, definitely a great, fun deck. One that you could absolutely use for gameplay. You could use for magic, cardistry. The handling is gonna be great. But I think it's just most fun as a gameplay deck. So definitely recommend checking this one out. It's a little bit harder to find because it is an older deck and they only printed about a thousand copies of the deck. Uh, so it's not a super easy deck to find, but definitely uh, consider grabbing one if you find it. So hope you enjoyed. That's a look at Viva Mexico uh, from Jay Losa. Uh, let me know what other decks you want to see, other deck reviews and unboxings, things like that. Subscribe for more content and I'll see you for the next one.